I want now to turn to the changes we propose to the current rules on self-isolation to ensure that they remain reasonable and proportionate. Let me be clear at the outset that these, those who have symptoms of or who test positive for COVID will still be required to self-isolate as now. However, from 9th August, an adult who is identified as a close contact of someone who has tested positive will no longer be required automatically to self-isolate for 10 days. Instead, if someone is double vaccinated with at least two weeks since the second dose, and if they have no symptoms, they should get a PCR test as soon as possible. And if the PCR test is negative, self-isolation can then be ended. Since PCR results come back quickly, frequently within 24 hours, this will greatly reduce the amount of time that many people will need to spend in self-isolation. We're proposing a similar change for people aged 17 or under, most of whom, of course, are not yet eligible for vaccination. If a young person aged 5 to 17 is identified as a close contact, they will need to take a PCR test, but they can end their self-isolation if they test negative. Children under the age of 5 will be encouraged but not required to get PCR tests. In addition, Test and Protect will implement revised guidance for under 18s, including in schools. This means that the blanket isolation of whole classes will no longer be routine. Instead, a more targeted approach will identify close contacts at higher, highest risk of infection. So fewer young people will be asked to self-isolate, and most will be asked to self-isolate for a much shorter period of time. Obviously, this is especially important as we approach the start of the new school year. So let me turn to the wider arrangements for the return of schools, uh, and updated guidance is being published today. As a consequence of the new approach to self-isolation, which is important to minimise disruption to education, and in line with advice from our expert advisory subgroup on education, we have decided to retain, for the first six weeks of the new academic term, most of the other mitigations that are currently in place in schools. This also reflects the unique environment of schools where large numbers of unvaccinated children and young people mix with adult staff. So for up to six weeks, subject then to review, there will be a continued requirement for staff to keep at least a metre distance from each other and from children and young people while on the school estate. And we've also decided, after careful consideration, to retain the current requirements for face coverings in schools for staff and for children aged 12 or over. That includes asking young people and staff in secondary schools to wear face coverings during lessons and while inside school buildings. I am acutely aware that many, many young people find this really difficult, and so it will be kept under review. But for now, we consider this an important protection for them and for others in the school. The expert advisory subgroup has also emphasised the importance of good ventilation, and we are therefore strengthening guidance in this regard. Many local authorities have already taken steps to improve ventilation in the school estate, and this work has highlighted the value of CO2 monitors. These devices are useful in assessing how well ventilated a space is, and therefore how likely it is that the virus could be present. The new guidance published today makes clear that all schools and daycare services for children must have access to CO2 monitoring through either fixed or mobile devices, and that these should be used to assess the quality of ventilation in schools and childcare settings and identify any necessary improvements. These assessments will be ongoing, obviously, over the coming weeks, but we expect them to be completed and necessary improvements identified by the October half term. And I can confirm today that we are making available to local authorities an additional £10 million to support this work. Ventilation is one of the most important ways in which the risk of COVID transmission can be reduced, and so improving it will be vital now and in the future to ensure that schools and childcare centres are as safe as possible. Finally, local authorities and schools will ask all secondary pupils and all school staff to take a lateral flow test one or two days before returning after the holidays and then to take tests twice a week after that. This continues to be an important additional way in which people in which COVID can be identified, even in people who do not have symptoms. We're also working with the further and higher education sector on plans for the year ahead, specific guidance on operating beyond level zero for universities and colleges has now been published. In addition, students will be encouraged to take a PCR test before any move to term time accommodation and then to test twice a week after that. 
Planning officer, the last year and a half has been, and this inevitably will be an understatement, uh, it has been difficult and stressful for children and young people, parents and all staff working in education settings. I am so grateful to them for the understanding and cooperation shown. The new school and academic term will still bring challenges. I think there is little doubt of that. But I hope it will also bring fewer disruptions and also allow a much more normal learning environment for all of our young people.